standing in my bathroom with the lights off. A faint gleam, an almost bioluminescent jellyfish sort of blue, spilling through the tiny little window in my bathroom. My, my bare feet are glued to the cold tile, and a man smokes a cigarette in fluent Russian right outside of my window. He's leaning against a snarling car, and it doesn't know how to drive itself just yet. He lets broken English shatter from his mouth into the bottom of his device. The device cannot make moral decisions just yet. There is an easiness to his lean. I am at this moment his anatomical antonym, standing as rigidly as the rusted metal pipe behind and to the right of me, almost as sentinel just standing here, allowing for things to, to like pass through me, trying to step out of the, the cockpit of this body ship and the voice, the voice of the fraudulent oracle is peeling from the next room, an onslaught of swarming logic gnats buzzing and engulfing me from behind the warm molasses of reason like a waterfall of warm honey. The voice dares me to acknowledge myself, to rem it reminds me of what it's like to B keeps reminding me to remember that in order for something to be conscious, it must be like something to be that thing. The voice is insisting that there is no evidence for the existence of free will, and I don't know if I even have the freedom to choose to believe whatever the fuck the voice is saying to me, and the voice challenges me without investing too much effort into my need for its approval, and the voice goads me into extending my arm and focusing on my outstretched hand. The voice implores me to scrutinize it there branching off the limb of my arm, almost alien, almost its own independent, sentient organism. The voice has, reduce, has reduced me, irreducible as the self might be, into a four-month-old baby of a man, recognizing the agency behind my stubby, dancing digits, wiggling my fingers at arm's length from my honed-in eyes, absolutely bamboozled by how blatantly foreign my own fucking hand seems to be to me. And the voice tells me to prepare to squeeze my hand shut, to try and concentrate on the precise moment that I decide to activate whatever set of synapses, whatever barrage of firing neurons result in the clinching of a forethought fist. And so I stood cold-footed, staring at my right hand, trying to toe the line between that which is intended and that which is reflexive, when suddenly the car outside my window, the one that had been leaned on by the man who smoked his cigarette in fluent Russian and spoke through his phone in broken English, the car that had been snarling all along like a, like a leashed dog, like a cocked back pistol, like a, like a twirling hourglass icon on a screen, awaiting for the thoughtful touch of an intentionally placed hand, it, it, it drove off and it took my attention with it. And it took the man with it too, presumably. And when the purr of its engine and the, the screech of its wheels and the crackling of pebbles below its grumbling departure had faded into the distance, my thoughts were permitted to return to the volitional implication of my own hand. By then, it was already scratching the side of my nose. <laughs>